Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Matthew from Twitter at Box Channel and today we are going to texture this model and turn it to this if you want to learn how to do that, watch this video. But before jumping to the video, let me introduce you the brand new course that we released for Substance Painter. Learning Substance Painter is easier than ever. Hey all Substance lovers, texture seekers and awesome future artists. Welcome to ultimate course for learning Substance Painter from zero to hero. Ready to learn how to texture with different projects? Substance Master released a brand new course for those who want to learn to texture with Substance Painter. In this course, we cover from preparing the model to rendering different projects, different challenges. If you want to level up your skill in texturing, come and check the Substance Master Ultimate course for learning Substance Painter. After baking the mesh maps, which is the very important step, we need to start the texturing process with creating different category and folder for each surface that we want. For example, I want the plastic folder, I want the metal folder and the fabric folder. So after creating these parts and give them the proper mask, we can continue our process. Okay, now let's go for the plastic part. For the plastic part, I'm going to use this fill layer and call it base material okay and let's pick some dark gray color the base color okay and now it's time to define the roughness i think for the base layer roughness should be on 0 0.25 so we have a reflective surface here and that's okay and Let's go for the next layer. I'm going to add a color variation. And let's keep just color. Okay, add the black mask, go to the add fill. And in here, I'm going to use Coveb Grunge. And let's increase styling to something like three, I think. It's good. And let's add the filter and use blur okay the blur itself and let's increase the intensity okay and now i need to change the blending mode to soft light and let's peak some gray value that's okay let's go to the base color and we can see we have color variation here, which is very good for us. And let's add the second layer. Okay, in this layer, I'm going to create another color variation. So color variation number two and color variation number one. Okay, now I need to keep color and roughness because in this layer, I need to create variation for the color and the roughness at the same time. So uh, let's change the blending mode to subtract for the base color. Okay, and pick some gray value. Okay, and now I can go here and add black mask for the layer. And in here I can use add fill and just use something like fractal sum. The second grunge okay let's go to the material we have good variation here but i need to increase the contrast and balance at the same time and decrease the opacity of the map that's great and for the roughness we can go for the 0 0.5 or 4 and now I go for the next layer. I'm going to call it surface detail. And let's add a filter. And in here, I'm going to search about the grain. So after adding grain, we just need to keep normal layer. Okay, and we can play with the scale and the intensity. I think this is good. And 
that's enough for this layer. Let's go for the next layer. I'm going to call it dark edge and let's add a black mask. Go to the generator and pick curvature as our generator and now we can see what is the result of this generator. So uh, let's keep color and roughness just only and go for the 0 0.5 or middle for the roughness and for the color we go for the dark value and change the blending mode to soft light. Okay, so we have dark value here, but we need to increase the global blur for this layer. So this is good. And now it's time to add another fill layer. I'm going to call it edge highlight because I need to have interesting result in the render. I'm going to add a highlight value on the edge. So let's add a black mask. Go to the generator and in here I'm going to use metal edge. Go to the mask, select the metal edge generator and decrease the ground amount and scale. Increase the wear level and we can increase the wear contrast here. Go back to the layer itself, pick roughness and give the value like 0.15 so we have the edge highlight here that's good and now before edge highlight we need to have a roughness variation okay and for this layer i'm going to use smart mask and edge blur and as you can see we have this result and let's go back here to the layer, keep roughness, and we can decrease the roughness to non-reflective surface. So uh, let's keep it like 0.6, and I think it's good. And now it's time to have a layer like scratches. And let's add the black mask, add the fill, and in here, I'm going to use the scratch generator, scratch rough. And let's go back to the mask. We can choose different map here. For example, this one, play with the balance and play with the tiling. So we can have this kind of scratch too, but uh, I think, yeah, we can, Choose this one too, the grunge scratch dirty or a scratch fine. Yeah, this one is better. So we can play with the scratch amount balance and the contrast, okay, to achieve the look that we want. Let's go back here. Uh, we can give a negative height value. Okay, change the blending mode to soft white, give a white value in the color, play with the roughness, maybe one, and that's enough. So uh, we can go here to the mask, add another fill layer and use another grunge map to break up this texture to have more unique result. Okay. Let me choose this one. Maybe the contrast balance. And yeah, this is right. So we can go here at the filter and use a filter like warp to break the uniform shape of the scratch. So we can give more negative value, as you can see. Yeah. And I think that's enough for the plastic part. 
we can go for the metal. For the metal section, I need two different surfaces, one steel and one copper. So I need to create two folder in the metal, one for copper and one for steel. For the steel, I'm going to use dark steel age. So we have the material right now and we just need to define the mask. And for the mask, I'm going to select this one, this one, and the zip line. So we have the material on the zip part. That's great. And now let's go for the Cooper. So for the Cooper, I need to create a fill layer. And let's rename it to base metal. And in here, let me choose a bright yellow color like this and I just need to have more roughness value or reflective surface okay that's enough and we need to turn on the metallic so we have the metallic surface right now and let's add surface details and for the surface details i just need to have height and the roughness so for the height let me increase the value and for the roughness let me decrease the reflective surface okay so let's add the black mask go here and add fill and in here i'm going to use bnw spotter 2 Okay, we can increase tiling, go here at filter and use a blur filter. So we have this and we can play with the height to create the effect that we want. For the base metal, I'm going to add a filter and choose galvanize filter. For galvanize filter, I just need to have normal map and I can increase the scale and play with the flakes intensity so we can turn on tree planner mapping and that's good so let's go for the next layer i'm going to call it dirt and in here let's add a black mask go to the generator and choose a dirt generator okay we can decrease the dirt contrast decrease the grunge scale to two and i think it's okay so i just need to have color and roughness for the roughness i choose something like 0 0.8 and for the color let me choose the black one so that's great okay now I need to change the opacity from 100 to 50. So this is our metal. We can work on it more and more, but that's enough for us for now. Okay, now it's time to attend to the fabric section. For the fabric section, I have three different surfaces, two for the body and one for the shoelace. So let's create the folders and give the proper mask to each folder and start the texturing process after this the first surface that we want to create is a shoelace and for this one we just rename this layer to base material and go for the color and i just need to have this kind of color like this or maybe a little brighter and a little go for the yellowish so this is fine and now it's time to create the second layer I'm going to call it surface detail and I just need to have color roughness and height for the height Let's go for the negative value. For the color, I'm going 
for the black one. And for the roughness, let's pick a high value. And let's add the black mask, go here, add the fill. And in here, let's search about the wave number two. This one, go to the mask and let's increase sliding. But uh, because we have separate UV island here, I create another UV set. And when I select this one, as you can see, we have continuous texture. So let's increase tiling to something like six. I think it's enough. And uh, let's increase tiling here to three. And now we have the perfect result for the shoelace. That's great. And we can add more detail, for example, color variation, roughness variation, but this is enough for the shoelace surface for this tutorial. And we need to continue to other surfaces. Okay, now it's time to focus on the fabric number one. For the fabric number one, let's rename it this layer to base material. And I'm going to pick color from the reference that I have on the other monitor. Okay, so this is the color that I need. Okay, and for the roughness, let's pick a high value. Okay, like this. And this is enough for the base material. Let's go for the color variation number one. Okay, and for the color variation number one, I just need to have color with a dark gray and change the blending mode to soft light and add a black mask, go to the generator and use 3D linear gradient. Okay, so let's invert it. And now as you can see, we have this color variation and we can control it with the balance here. So I think it's good to have the mask like this and this is the value that we have. Okay, so let's go for the next layer, color variation number two. Okay, let's keep just color channel here, go to the white value, change the blending mode to soft light. Okay, and as you can see, we have a light value of the color. So let's add a black mask, go to the fill, and in here, I'm going to search about leaks. So I can select the grunge leaks here. Okay, that's good. Let's increase tiling to something like, yeah, one is good. We don't need to change it. Okay, go add to filter and use blur filter to avoid this sharp transition between colors. So let's increase the blur intensity and yeah we are good and I need to change the opacity of the soft light color variation layer to something like 20. Okay now it's time to create another color variation here color variation number three this color variation it has color and the height so let's add black mask go to the at fill and I'm going to use grunge map 14. Okay, so let's increase tiling, play with the balance and contrast here, like this. Okay, let's have a slight positive amount in height, and for the color, let's go for the soft light and dark gray like this one so let's decrease the opacity here and we can increase the height value this i think it's too strong so let's create half value that's great let's go back here to the grunge and we can play with the control some balance, play with the tiling to achieve the result 
that we want. Okay, that's enough. It's good. And let's add the surface detail. Okay, for the surface detail, let's keep color, height, and roughness. I need to have negative value in height, high amount in roughness, and let's peak the white value in the base color because we are going to change it to soft light. So let's add a black mask, uh, go here to add fill, and in here I'm going to use BNW spot number two. Yeah, I think it's good. So let's increase lighting to three. It's good. And now we can play with the height value. I think this, this is good. Okay. And we can decrease the opacity of the soft light. And yeah. So we are done. In a surface detail now it's time to create another layer and call it surface pattern for the surface pattern i'm going to use black mask and feel and wave 2. so this is the wave 2. okay now it's time to increase tiling to 32. okay we can change the size of the texture set to 2k to see the final result better in the viewport. So let's see what we have. Yeah, I think it's good. So let's go to the layer itself and let's keep height normal and roughness. For the roughness, I will change it to one. And for the height, let's choose negative value. And for the color, I think we can decrease the opacity. Okay, like this. So we have the pattern on the surface, we have the surface details and etc. So that's good. Okay, and uh, we can have another layer, dark edge. And let's add a black mask, go to the generator and we can use UV border for this purpose. Okay, like this, we can increase the smoothness. And let's keep color, go to the black. And we are going to use soft light for this purpose. And we can decrease the opacity to 50, for example. Yeah, we have darker edge, as you can see. And that's good. So, okay, we need to add this one here to the mask. Okay, and we are done. So for the plastic part, I need to add the back of the zip line to the plastic. That's okay. So we have the first fabric and we just need to have another extra surface detail. So let's add another surface detail, number two. Okay, and let's add a black mask, go to the field and choose BNW1. That's great. And now let's add a filter like high pass. Okay, now we have this mask. We can increase tiling to four, for example. And let's go here and add another filter like histogram. Scan. Okay, and now we can play with the position and contrast here to select some spot here. So we have white spot here. We are going to increase the height, for example, like this, or maybe a little slighter, for example, like this one. So that's great. And now we can play with the opacity here, go to the surface pattern and we can 
decrease the height amount to have more strong effect on the surface pattern that's great to have this surface like this and let's go for the next fabric layer okay for the next fabric surface let's call it base material and i'm going to use the same color range but a little darker okay so let's just remove some value that's okay now we have the base color that we want and maybe for the roughness i go with the middle value for the next layer i'm going to create a color variation okay let's add a black mask go to the add fill and in here i can choose uh, something like creased okay and increase styling to four for example and because it's a color variation we just need to have color i pick some uh, dark gray and just remove some opacity of that so we have this color variation or we can change it to something else like dirt 4 yeah i think it's better maybe we can have roughness 2 yeah it's so much better to have this kind of noise on the surface okay now it's time to move to the next layer i'm going to call it surface pattern and for the surface pattern i'm going to use fill in the mask with circle map and whenever we increase tiling as you can see uh, we have different size here because uh, we try to optimize some uv spaces so we have different size for inner side and outer size so to avoiding this kind of uh, problem i use uv set the newest feature in the substance painter so i just need to set uv set number one that uh, contains same texel density across all the uv island and now we have the same size on the textures okay so let's increase tiling in here okay like this and maybe a little in tiling here that's great so we can uh, have height color and roughness okay for the color i can have the same color code but we can give more value to it okay remove some opacity that's great let's go to the circle again so i need to remove some balance here maybe more yeah and we can decrease the color again and this is the result so that's perfect and now let's go for tweaking roughness value let's peak 0 0.75 and now it's time to add uh, some wrinkle detail okay so let's add a filter i'm going to call it wrinkles so let's add a black mask go to the generator and i'm going to use inflate shrink wrap okay so we have this and we can select a preset here for example tight okay that's great we just need to have height here and we can increase height value here like this okay so uh for the fabric number one we can create something like this but we just a simple fill layer 
Okay, let's search about decreased. Okay, go here, increase tiling to something like five. Okay, and let's keep just height here and we can increase height like this one. Okay, we can uh, increase tiling again to eight and now we have something here, but it's too much. We can decrease the opacity. Yeah, I think it's better. We can change tiling to six and that's perfect. I think it's enough for the fabric section and now it's time to create the stitches on the surface. So for creating stitches, we just need to have a paint layer and let's call it the stitches. Go to the pass tool and in the library, we can select the top stitching tool here. And now we can easily add our stitches like this. Just click the point on the surface and create the line that we want. We can change the size like this. We need to select the path like this go here and choose the category stitches type and thread thickness for example here i need to have more thick thread and we can decrease the size with this slider here for example this one is much better okay we can control the line with the points and in a puckering, we can change the type to leather to have a better condition on the stitches tool. So I need to create stitches all around the surface. And this is the repetitive work. So I stop the video and put all the stitch on the surface. And after that, we can continue our work. Okay, now we have the stitches line around the model as you can see and we have an extra detail here which I created with a simple gradient multiplied by the mask selected here as you can see and we have the stitch around the model and all pieces so it's a super simple technique that you can bring detail on your model so let's go for the last step we are going to add logos and tags on the surfaces for the last step i found some resources from the internet and modified in photoshop and now i want to import it as a texture into substance painter library Okay, into the project and now I'm going to use them for the first layer let's create the logo number one and I'm going to use logo number one here for the first setting let's change the UV up to none okay and we need to add an anchor point here go to the black mask and add fill and load the anchor point and because it's a PNG file without any background we can change the alpha behavior to extract alpha so now we have a dynamic mask for this layer so let's go to the 2d view okay and we can change the size and put it wherever we want for example for the first spot i want to have this logo in here like this one okay so that's great and now because we have a dynamic mask we can add height value like this and we can play with the roughness 
and the textures that we have here like this one so we can change the blending mode to normal for all the layers so we prevent to receive any data from down layers okay so this is the first one and now I'm going to add a fill layer again choose the base color here okay now I can change the UV up to none and reposition the map wherever I need so for the back part we can use this mask like this okay and now we have this logo here we can increase the height value like this one play with the roughness maybe bnw spot it's a good option okay we can increase scale that's great and you can go here to the logo add a filter and choose blur and give it a slight blur amount that's perfect so uh, i don't like the red color here so i can simply go here at the filter and call hsl filter here and play with the hue slider yeah i think this color is much better okay and we can remove some saturation that's great we can add a level here and change affected channel to roughness go to the roughness channel and as you can see we have some noisy pattern here so we can change the roughness look like this so we have this and yeah it's so much better it's so much better to have roughness like this okay that's great this is for the logo and let's go for the text for the next layer i'm going to call it text and let's use this black and white resources so let's add a black mask add a fill okay and now put this logo here go to the 2d view change the uv up to none and we need to find the best location for this i think this UVI land is good. Okay. As you can see, it's good. Yeah, like this. And let's add another fill layer here. And I'm going to load this one here, change the UV wrap to none. And as you can see, I just changed the blending mode from normal to linear dodge to avoiding any conflict between these alphas and I just reposition and put it on the surface and wherever I want it. So after that let's go for changing parameter in layer. For the layer let's keep the normal AO roughness height and color. For the color let's keep it in white. And change the blending mode to soft light okay that's great and let's decrease the opacity value here for the height let's go for the negative value that's great and as you can see we have the text on the surface so this is done and we create the texture for our tactical boots. I hope you enjoy this tutorial, learn something new and useful to use it in your project. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments 
And if you like it, please hit the like button. And if you want to know about the future videos, you can subscribe the channel. Be creative, be safe. Bye.